Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. We're painting Space Marines. Today we paint Grim Dark. The Space Marines are actually my son's army. I have my Death Guard and my Admech. Inspired by John Gomez, Pintor Leando Miniatures, he paints his own Space Wolves, so I thought I'd start painting my own army. Also, I got a comment in one of the Facebook groups that I use too many paints for dry brushing. So I thought I'd show why I use a lot of paints when it comes to dry brushing in this video. So dry brushing, much like layering in my opinion, will yield really nice subtle results if you use more paints. More paints or more colors will yield nice transitions. Oh by the way, if you like minis and mecha, do subscribe to the channel. I always say this once in a while, that dry brushing is the king of all painting techniques. I also saw a post at a Facebook group that a guy painted the skin of figures with dry brushing. It was okay, but it lacks a bit of contrast, so that's another reason why I decided to dry brush this project. As you can see, I'm using more paints than usual. Usually from black, you dry brush the base color. But for this one, I use purple first, royal purple, and then those will serve as the shadows. And now royal blue is dry brush with a bit more carefully. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any inquiries or suggestions to improve the video, do drop a comment in the comment section below. So much like layering, I did dry brushing in three passes creating like a nice transition darker at the bottom and lighter at the top also you build up the royal blue it's more intense at the head part area so again much like layering we're using like a smaller dry brush here i used a number one synthetic brush and trimmed it into like it looks like a stippling brush now and i'm just dry brushing very lightly on very small areas I hope I'm kinda showing that as you paint with more colors or as you dry brush with more colors and then you paint or dry brush in less areas as the color gets lighter, you're practically layering. And similar to layering, if you want to smoothen the transitions, you could do a wash filtering. The wash will smoothen all your dry brushing and will create a really nice solid color in terms of the overall look of your model. Now the model is looking too smooth. It's no longer grim dark and too flat. Now we add more highlights with Andrea Blue, a very nice vibrant blue. We mix it with thinner. You could use water but I like using thinner because it dissolves the paint better. We're not blending the highlights. You could use glaze medium if you want blending. You could even use your airbrush. But I don't like that. We're trying to replicate the texture of the dry brushing. So I'm kind of stippling the highlights. So the tricky part here is selecting where the highlight should fall because we're trying to achieve grim dark. So less highlights, I guess, would look more grim dark-ish. I'm not really sure because this is my first grim dark. although I'm used to weathering my mecha and gunpla, I'm not really familiar in terms of the culture and the real like look of grim dark miniatures. If you like, you could drop a comment in the comment section below and tell me what grim dark is all about. I think it's looking good, but we could add more highlights later. Now we paint the gold trims. I usually use three colors in all of my painting. In Like if I paint leather, I use three colors. If I paint red, I use three colors or a bit more. But here, I eventually decided not to use the copper 
and just use the teeny tin and the old gold. So we're going with TMM because I have so many units of ultramarines here and I don't want to paint it in NMM that will take so much time. Always be careful not to over thin your metallic paints because if you over thin them the pigments will separate from the binder. Also, if you're painting metallics, wash your brushes more often than when you're painting with normal paints. Or, you could use cheap synthetic brushes for metallic painting. Now, we're going to paint the highlights with old gold, basically just painting very small areas of the gold parts. Also, at the trim at the shoulder armor, I'm painting it like stripes, like I skip from this area to another area by creating that you sort of kind of make them more glossy and now I made a mistake I should have done the decal work first before painted the gold trims cuz you'll see later now decal work this is one of my specialty <laughs> so coming from the gunpla hobby those really large flat surfaces of gunpla kits if you don't add details like spanner lines or plat plates and stuff they look great if you add so many decals so after applying the decals soaked in water i just let the model sit for a while like drink coffee feed the fish and stuff like that and then i roll the buds along those de decal work so that they lay down flat and then i do decal softener so i'm very careful when it comes to decal work because again of my gunpla background so i do two passes of decal softener the first pass i applied it like religiously or a lot on the decal and then let the model sit for a while again and then apply another pass of decal softener and then use the cotton buds to like flatten the decal out so once the decal softener has softened the decal it will lay down really flat on the surface now i seal everything with gloss varnish so the gloss varnish of course can be brush painted i thinned it one is to one with thinner and then brush painted it over the decals now let's paint the basing or the groundwork because i want to see how much color i want to add to the details of wait i changed my mind here so we're going to do sponge technique with the armor so now you hear the roosters it's midnight here so anyways um this was the mistake i made earlier i should have done the decal work and the sponge technique before painting the gold trims the roosters agreed that i made the mistake see and basically the sponge technique is blending or weathering the decal work so that they look like they're part of the armor even prior to fighting now we paint the leather pouches um so we selected paints for the leather pouches but okay i changed my mind again let's paint the basing or the groundwork first so we're doing the basing first so that we'll know how like how bright the color should be in terms of painting the elements of the space marines i'm dry brushing lighter brown around the rim area so that i create separation between the black rim later and the groundwork now we paint black over the pistols and other areas that needed correction because we dry brushed earlier we're painting cavalry brown over the red parts because i hate painting red over black areas that's kind of waste of time the cavalry brown is an awesome undercoat for reds I posted a whip of the red helmet at Instagram and got a comment if I have a tutorial on painting the helmet. 
you'll notice in all my videos that I don't paint over black. So we start with cavalry brown and then after the cavalry brown has dried, we build up layers because I love layering. Also, we mix the previous paint with the current paint so that we create nice smooth transitions. Although we're creating nice transitions with the colors, I'm not painting this or blending this so that it will look smooth because I want to replicate the texture of the dry brushing of the blue armor. So a bit of stippling and scratches here and there so that the red helmet complements the blue power armor. Now we paint the leather pouches. The leather pouches I painted very roughly because I want to finish the models already. <laughs> Seriously though, I painted the leather pouches by streaking or like painting in swift strokes so that I create like a scratch and worn out leather look. So it's just basic layering but very roughly. I'm not blending at all creating and painting less areas as the colors get lighter and very swift stroke so that I create some like scratches a look of like a very worn out leather this medium gray is the highlights of our leather parts and the base colors of the ribbon parts Quick tip on painting the ribbons, I'm sorry I don't know what it's called but basically paint horizontal lines already leaving black areas so that you don't have to paint the black writings later. Wow, I think that's a great lazy tip. Now we paint dark green gray over the gray areas, the gray inner armor parts and then we're going to use the same colors later for dry brushing the pistols using my red grass dry brush here which is awesome i'm not being careful with the dry brushing here because if i over dry brush over the blue power armor they will look natural and look like scratches now we paint the chrome parts of the pistols. I don't like using chrome too much because they're so bright, especially for miniatures. So I'm using burnt iron. You could also use magnesium or jet exhaust. Now we're done. I think we're done. I successfully painted the unit of Space Marines for the first time and for my YouTube channel. My son will be so happy with the Space Marines. Now I need to paint my Death Guard. Now let's do a bit of off-camera adjustments with pigments, more highlights, and a bit of washes. That's it. We're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos!